welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about Kiwi. Kiwi will be turning 6 years old um, on November 17th. Um, so she is actually the oldest member in my flock. Now I know when a lot of people see Kiwi, they, they always ask me this one question. What is that on her nose? Um, you should take her to the vet. And for some reason a lot of people assume she has mites. She doesn't have mites by the way. Um, I'll show you guys what mites look like under a microscope. Um, it's pretty ugly. No offense. Um, but I don't know. I don't think so anyone likes mites. But anyway, Kiwi doesn't have mites. Kiwi has a condition called hyperkeratosis. Now, I don't want to make the definition too fancy or anything because I do know I have younger audiences. So I think I'm going to make it very simple. It's pretty much dead skin on the uh, outer epidermis. Um, that's pretty much the simplest way I could say it. But again, you could call it waxy waxy buildup. I've called it waxy buildup many times. I've called it dead skin. It, it's pretty much skin that that's not live. I guess. How else could I word it? Um, with hyperkeratosis, you could see domestic animals be affected by it. Also, animals in the wild. Um, yeah, it pretty much affects a lot of species out there. Now, I wouldn't say it's very common, but at the same time, I wouldn't really say it's rare. I do see budgies within the parrot community. I do see budgies and canaries more likely to be affected with it. Canaries more so on their legs. Budgies specifically females more so on their seer uh, anyone who has a female budgie similar to the seer of kiwi may know regardless if they have hyperkeratosis or not that the seer is actually a bit rough in texture it's not very silky smooth so i think that's why maybe we don't see it often with um you know budgies with recessive mutations um, regardless of their gender recessive mutations with some budgies they tend to have this very silky smooth textures I have seen canaries who also get it um, mainly on their legs um, I don't know why but I've seen more canaries have them on their legs and I've seen more budgies have them on their seer um, but I have at one point uh, you know was concerned about Kiwi having them on her legs but she has seen a vet specifically Dr. Evan she seems you know whenever I go to the vet she sees many vets but Dr. Evan did say that you know it's just dry skin um, I do sometimes get worried about it but it, she doesn't have them on her legs pretty much now I know some people want to know what it looks like but the simplest way I could explain it is dry skin it almost looks like a scab um, yeah it's it's kind of weird to explain it but it's it's I know this is going to be gross, so if you want to click away, you could click away, but it looks like dry earwax, which I haven't had any, but that's the closest description I could really give. Um, it's not gross. I mean, I'm not grossed out by it, but some people might be grossed out by it. Now, I know people are going to ask, why do they even get it in the first place? There could be three reasons why. One of the first reasons, which you can treat in a way, is vitamin A deficiency. Now, whenever I researched about hyperkeratosis, which I even brought up to Dr. Evan, who has seen Kiwi uh, in many instances, pretty much every other rep, but he did say it's very unlikely for Budgie specifically to have a vitamin A deficiency. And given that Kiwi has a very good diet, she's on pellets, she's on veggies, and I did mention that she is on seeds as well. People always question me about that, but I could do a video for a later date about that topic. But she's very unlikely to have a deficiency on vitamin A. So we ruled that out. Now the second reason why some people assume that birds might be getting it is because of hormones. Again, I talked to Dr. Evan about this. It's not very likely, guys. Um... It can happen, but it's not very likely. If you are concerned that your bird has hyperkeratosis because of hormones or an elevation in hormones, you could easily put them in a quarantine, I mean, for 40, 60 days, and I don't know if it disappears. That might be the reason why. I haven't seen anyone, you know, who had birds who were cured because it was affected by hormones, pretty much. It, I just haven't seen it. Now the third reason, which I think is the main reason why birds get hyperkeratosis, is because of genetics. Which kinda in a way sucks because 
that also means there's no cure for it. Uh, with the other two options that I mentioned, there could possibly be a cure if you fix the diet and hopefully if you put down the hormone levels, um, you could technically get rid of it. But with genetics, which, you know, at this point Kiwi has it because of her genetics, it's very unlikely she's going to get rid of it. She is six years old and she hasn't gotten rid of it. Um, so those are the three reasons why um, birds could get hyperkeratosis. I really do think the third option is the main option for most most birds out there. I mean, I'm sure that there's a few unique cases, but most birds probably have it because it's kind of in their genes. As I have mentioned earlier, I don't really think there is a cure for it, especially if it's genetics, but I will say there is options, I guess treatment options, or to make um, the condition a bit more bearable. Now with Kiwi, as I've said, it affects her seer and you guessed it, I pretty much remove it. Because of the Rona, my bird hasn't been to the vet. I actually will have a close-up picture and I've noticed with that picture she took a bath and stuff. It actually was grown a bit um, and for me to remove it, it's actually pretty easy. I will be honest with you guys, your bird is definitely not going to like, um, you know, having someone touch their sear, their nose, whatever you want to call it. It's just a very delicate area and they... They just aren't gonna like it. I mean, I find that with every parrot, they don't really like being touched on the feet. I mean, I could touch it, but like, she's not gonna like it. She's very still. Are you sleepy? This is the time they actually sleep, so she's kind of tired. So yeah, they're not gonna really like being touched on their nose or on their feet, pretty much if it affects them. Now, I know some people are going to ask me, well, if there's no cure, what can we do about it? You pretty much want to remove it. Now, I know some people are kind of scared. Please take your bird to the vet. Let us confirm for sure that they do have hyperkeratosis. And once you have that confirmed, then you could remove it or you could ask your vet to remove it or show you how to remove it but it's really easy you could put organic coconut oil or organic palm oil wait for 30 minutes to an hour or even overnight and then the next day you could pretty much remove it um there's really nothing else that i could really add to that now as to why you want to remove it is because over time if it's not removed it could actually close up on the nostrils like on the top area she doesn't like me touching there um it could pretty much close up so you you want to avoid that the reason why you also want to remove any dead skin on the legs is because over time it could actually build up and it becomes very sensitive for them and even when you're peeling it you might actually get them bleed a little bit which it's not the scariest, um, you know, thing, but uh, you really want to keep up with the whole treatment option, which, like I said, it's pretty much removing it. Uh, before I end the video, I do want to say that this condition does not affect their lifespan. Even if you find that your bird's sear is closing up, please take them to the vet. They could easily remove it and hopefully they could start breathing a bit better, but it doesn't affect their lifespan in any way. I mean, if you give your bird a bad diet, um, yeah, that's going to definitely affect uh, their lifespan, but the condition itself doesn't. Um, and I have gotten nasty comments about it. Um, I had few instances. I don't know why some people call my bird ugly, but excuse me. Uh, she's not ugly. She just has a medical condition. Um, I'm not a horrible owner. She's been to the vet multiple times um, with different vets. There's nothing they could do about it. It just gets removed. Uh, yeah, so I have gotten nasty comments in the past because of it. I find that now I don't, uh, thank God. But I do get occasional comments saying that, hey, she has mites. She doesn't have mites. As I mentioned, it's not mites, guys. If it was mites, um, over time she would succumb to her injuries because mites feed off the blood supply and eventually she will die. I mean, God forbid, but for mites to kill your bird, it will take a lot of effort, but then it can happen. But in her case, no, it's not mites. She's lived with it for six years. You're not going to see a bird live with mites for six years. They're going to be dead at that point. I hate to break it to you, but yeah, that's just not that's just not what she has. Hers is hyperkeratosis. Um, and I also wanted to do this video because a lot of people don't know what it is. Um, also, some people say, hey, my bird's seal looks exactly like that. What should I do? 
I do think that when someone comes to YouTube and on their YouTube search, you know, type in hyperkeratosis, hopefully they could see this video and see that there are options. Before I end it, I'll have some blog articles that I wrote um, so you guys could learn about it and also how you remove it specifically. Um, those are a bit old, so I probably should update the information on it, but I still think it's useful so you guys can go there and have a look at it. Um, but this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>